You are watching ABC 7 News at 5.30. Welcome back to State of the Art Hospitals. Our plan for Venice in the next few years. But before breaking ground, Sarasota County will need to make changes that are not sitting well with some people living nearby. ABC 7's Rebecca Fernandez joins us now with the extensive list of their concerns. Rebecca? Adam, Jacqueline, yes, they are very concerned. Sarasota County is planning to bring the new Venice Regional Bayfront Hospital to this large piece of land behind me. But to do this, they'd have to rezone the area, which is the problem for many of these residents. We're not opposed to the hospital being in the area. And we're not opposed to development. It's not like we don't want anything going around here. That's why there was a comprehensive plan. The growth in this area warrants another hospital, no question. What I have to say is that I live in an area that's zoned a certain way, and now I'm looking at an 85-foot rather than a 35-foot structure at the end of my block. Jim is one of 4,000 residents who live near this property, and all are hoping their voices will be heard. I think it's very disturbing that the, the county commissioners seem to be indifferent to the concerns of the residents. Concerned not only that this giant hospital will be built in the middle of a residential neighborhood, but about the noise and pollution that may come with it. I can see not wanting the hospital on the aisle, given flooding and storms and all of that. That's a, there's other places to go. They say traffic is another big problem on the two streets that lead to the hospital site. East Venice Avenue is only two lanes, and Jacaranda Boulevard already has a very busy roundabout. At this point, how much traffic that will generate. And the, the traffic is really at capacity already. Then there's parking and the addition of nearly 1,500 spaces and concern about the impact on wildlife at the nearby Mayaka Reserve. It's going to disrupt the, the wonderful richness of, of wildlife that we enjoy here. And the county in the comprehensive plan has expressed a desire to preserve the environment and foster all our many uh, inhabitants, not just people. Sarasota County Planning Commission will be hosting a public hearing about these changes on August 2nd. Live in Venice this evening, Rebecca Fernandez, ABC 7, your Suncoast News. Back to you. All right, thank you, Rebecca. Right now, an investigation is underway after a major industrial fire burned overnight at Port Manatee in Palmetto. The fire was inside a massive biodiesel tank. Fire officials say 60,000 gallons of palm oil, primarily used for cooking in developing countries, was smoking when they arrived. About 40 firefighters tackled the flames from those uh, massive tanks. Uh, or excuse me, that one massive tank. Firefighters are relieved it was biofuel instead of oil, but they say the cleanup will still go on for quite a while. It's vegetable, it's palm oil. Okay. So no immediate hazard to the environment. Uh, nothing has escaped the tank at this point. Thankfully, firefighters also say no one was injured and there is still no word on what caused that blaze. And remember, you can get the latest breaking news happening across the Sun Coast, as well as your first alert weather forecast, just by downloading our app. You can find it under WWSB or My Sun Coast in the App Store. And you might have heard about some storms this morning if you had the app. Yeah, you definitely did. I know I got my alerts through the through the app. And so let's check in with Chief Meteorologist Bob Harrigan for a look at our first alert forecast, Bob. Yeah, and on those apps, we also updated the red tide issues that we've been seeing here along the west central coast of Florida. And uh, they have been extremely high from Venice southward. In fact, one of the research uh, scientists who helps mode out and get, gets the samples uh, just uh, texted me and said that he has seen uh, extremely high samples uh, taken today off of Venice. Venice Beach, uh, talking over uh, 2 million cells per liter, which is uh, off the charts, really. Uh, you can see the uh, strong waves continue to move onshore here at Casey Key. That is also causing some problems. We don't have any storms around uh, of any significance at this point, but uh, boy, that rip current advisory is uh, going to stay with us uh, through tonight and tomorrow, too. More late night storms possible. Now, this is a, a chance for more scattered storms. We see a couple of pieces of energy still rotating around this area of low pressure that continues 
continues to stay right there over Georgia and Alabama. That's going to eventually shift out of here by Wednesday, but Tuesday we'll look for similar conditions. Uh, some areas may not get the rain, but we'll see some scattered storms around even on Tuesday. You can see it all kind of rotating around in a counterclockwise fashion, a very broad area of low pressure in the upper level of the atmosphere. On top of that, we have a trough that is uh, dug down into the eastern third of the nation, which is unusual for summer. Typically our flow is zonal, meaning uh, due west to east flow, but uh, it's been a little bit uh, strange to see this happening, and we see these little pieces of energy again rotating around that area of low pressure, which move right into the west coast of Florida. Exact timing and location still kind of difficult to pinpoint at this point, but uh, we will still see some of the activity here. Right now it's well to the north up uh, near Cedar Key and down to the south and west of us. As I mentioned, this area of low pressure will shift and move off basically to the west and then high pressure will build back in, but that'll happen on Wednesday and Thursday. We'll start to see a little bit uh, better conditions as far as the sea state goes too, I think, by Wednesday and Thursday as well. Rainfall estimates are not all that impressive across Sarasota, but Manatee County had their fair share with some heavier rains earlier today. And now as far as the uh, future cast goes, there they are, showers starting to pop up at 9 o'clock. Again, not specific, uh, not exactly going to be right here at 9, but I suspect after 8, 9 o'clock, we'll start to see some of this action working its way on shore uh, through the late night and early morning hours. Well, more in the forecast in just a few minutes. Back to you. All right, Bob, thank you. The Sarasota County School Board could soon see a shakeup. Three seats are up for grabs and eight candidates are battling for your vote. Tonight, the focus is on District 4. ABC 7's Alan Cohn joins us now with what's coming up tonight on ABC 7 at 7. Jacqueline Shirley Brown has been on the school board and before that in the state legislature, but right now in her bid for re-election, she has her hands full with Karen Rose. Brown has served on the school board for the past 12 years. Before that, she was in the legislature between 1992 and 2000. Her competitor, Karen Rose, spent the last 28 years in Sarasota County's education system, 12 years teaching at Southside Elementary. She was principal at Brookside Middle School and later at Sarasota Middle. Right now I'm, I'm concerned because in Tallahassee, they want to arm our teachers with guns rather than giving them the tools they need to help our children succeed. I really feel like there are uh, some issues on the table and having served for so many years and having the support of, of actually students that have grown up and their adults, neighbors, friends, colleagues, that there's a lot of things that I can help support and resolve. This is technically a nonpartisan race. However, Brown is a Democrat. Rose is a Republican. They'll both be at the trapezoid tonight, only on ABC 7 at 7. Back to you. All right, thank you, Alan. A new voting location in the Newtown community will be at the North Sarasota Library. July 30th is the last date to register if you want to vote in the August 28th primary. Progressive Sarasota will be hosting a voter registration drive in Newtown on July 28th and 29th. Volunteers will be set up at two local barbershops to register people to vote. They will be at Fatheads on Martin Luther King Jr. Way and Cutting Up on North Tamiami Trail from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. For the second year in a row, the Sarasota Police Department wants to help our community pack the patrol car with school supplies for the upcoming school year. Officers are accepting school supplies now until August 10th. Donations can be dropped off from 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. in the lobby of the Sarasota Police Department. They're looking for things like backpacks, pencils, notebooks, and much more. You can find a full list of those supplies on our website at mysuncoast.com. And you may get a price break in the next few weeks on back-to-school shopping. To help families save money on school supplies, the state of Florida holds a yearly back-to-school sales tax holiday. Depending on where you shop, the savings could really add up. Florida's back-to-school tax break is August 3rd through the 5th. It applies to clothing that costs up to $60 per item and certain school supplies that sell for up to $15. You can find a complete list of eligible items at floridarevenue.com. Out of all the summer 2018 graduates at St. Petersburg College, there is one who stands out a little more than others. Meet 11-year-old William Malis, who just earned his bachelor's degree. The boy genius says he learned algebra by the time he was four and graduated high school at nine. William has also been taking college classes since he was eight years old. He says his goal is to one day be an astrophysicist. 
wow, yeah. I'm just like blown away by all of that. So I am way behind yeah, on my career Yeah, impressive, impressive. <laughs> well, still to come here on your Suncoast News. Security procedures being used in London airports could one day lead to the removal of liquid restrictions. We'll tell you about that innovative new technology coming up next. Temperatures are rising and the deals are heating up during the summer clearance event at Sunset Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram Fiat in Sarasota. Shop the area's largest selection of new 2018 Jeep Wranglers or get the most awarded SUV of all time, a new Jeep Cherokee for as little as $19,999. Find the path to your next great adventure in the all-new Jeep Compass for just $17,999. Better prices, bigger selection. Go to Sunset Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram Fiat in Sarasota. This is an important message for anyone with Medicare. You may be eligible for an all-in-one Medicare plan that combines hospital, medical, and prescription drug coverage together with extra benefits that may include dental, vision, hearing aids, and much more. Some of these plans have a $0 monthly premium regardless of your income. That's right. For one low plan premium, or in some cases a $0 premium, you may be able to get coverage for your hospital visits, doctor appointments, prescription drugs, routine dental care, eyeglasses and contact lenses, hearing aids, and possibly more. Today may be the first time you've heard about this type of Medicare plan. The advisors at the Medicare.com helpline are licensed insurance agents who will explain more when you call. Call now to see if you qualify. Call the number on your screen now. Call now to see if you qualify for these benefits. You worked hard for your Medicare. Now is the time for your Medicare to work hard for you. Not affiliated with or acting on behalf of any government agency or program. I'm Deshauna Barber. In 2016, I was proud to win the title of Miss USA. What makes me just as proud is my service in the U.S. military. In the service, a soldier gains skills and learns values like discipline and leadership. That makes them an asset to any business that hires them. If you're an employer on behalf of Coalition to Salute America's Heroes, remember to hire smart and bet on a vet. Visit saluteheroes.org or call this number to learn more. Planning a Carnival Fantasy Cruise out of Mobile? Then check out the park and cruise packages at the luxurious Battle House and Renaissance Riverview Plaza Hotels. Stay at the Battle House for $169 per night or the Riverview Plaza for just $149 per night and leave your car for the duration of your cruise. Includes transportation to and from the cruise terminal. If you're cruising out of Mobile, come stay with us. Call 1-800-MARRIOTT or visit Marriott.com now. Gluten-free foods, it sounds healthy, right? But is it always a healthier option? ABC's Arlette Signs tells us why it may not be healthier for children. Gluten-free food, sounds healthy, right? Recommended by doctors for celiac disease and tried by parents everywhere for a variety of different conditions. But is it actually healthier for kids? In a new study, researchers set out to answer this very question. They bought over 350 food items marketed for children and compared the nutritional quality of the foods with a gluten-free label and the foods without it. Overall, gluten-free labeled products had lower levels of sodium and lower percentages total fat and saturated fat. But there was a catch. Those very same gluten-free foods with lower sodium and lower fat had almost 40% more sugar. So if you have a child with celiac disease on a gluten-free diet, or if you're trying a gluten-free diet for another condition, what can you do to shop smart? Check the nutrition labels. Despite their healthy reputation, gluten-free foods might be holding a sweet surprise for you. With this Medical Minute, I'm Arlette Sines, ABC News.
Well, we hear a lot about diet soda being bad for our health, but now we're learning it could help fight off colon cancer. Researchers from the Yale Cancer Center found that those who drank at least one 12 ounce serving of artificially sweetened soda a day were 46% less likely to have a reoccurrence of colon cancer. Now, before you go ahead and indulge in a diet soda, researchers say more studies are needed to better understand the link. Now, your ABC 7 first weather forecast with Chief Meteorologist Bob Harrigan. Interesting cloud formations, some high cirrus clouds right there. Linda getting this shot from uh, near Sarasota, and I'll tell you, she's been watching us since 1983, her and her family. And they say they watch all the time. They tell their friends too. Tell your friends as well to send photos into pics. PIX at mysuncoast.com. Thank you for that, Linda. And uh, we are looking at the, the possibility of some clouds producing some rainfall later on this evening. Nothing going on right now. It's pretty quiet up and down the coast. Yesterday we knew we were going to see some strong storms as a result of the big storms that were firing up over the panhandle in North Florida. That creates these outflow boundaries, which in turn causes some big storms to develop as a result of the high humidity. And we had lots of heat yesterday and that really fired those storms off. I think we'll see more developing in here in the Gulf of Mexico sometime after eight o'clock right now. The heaviest weather by far up near Cedar Key pushing off to the east right now. Not a lot going on and it should stay that way. So if you have an evening plan for a drive or walk on the beach, it should be okay. Just a bit breezy and obviously a problem south of Sarasota though in Venice southward as a result of the red tide on the beach. But uh, there's one big cell out there in the Gulf of Mexico that kind of indicates that we do have some instability still to the west and north of us, which will on that west wind uh, kind of rotate around into parts of west central Florida. But as I mentioned to and alluded to, nothing going on right now. There are some watches and warnings. Our warnings are uh, a flood warning taking place at the Manatee River at the Mayak ahead, and that's a result of the heavy rain that we saw yesterday as those storms pushed on through. Well, there is some dry air occasionally trying to slip in here. You can see some of that over the panhandle right now, but for us, we still have a lot of the blue showing up, and that means uh, the moist atmosphere is still around here with the potential for some showers and storms scattered. That's the keyword scattered about. Not everyone's going to see the rain, but when you do, it's going to be uh, he heavy at times and it could even produce some lightning late tonight and tomorrow morning. Uh, we will eventually see this whole system kind of shift out of here and then high pressure build in from the south to the north, which will give us a little bit more sunshine, I think, and also a few showers along the coast because when that high is suppressed down to our south, we get that west wind continuing and that's not going away on Wednesday. We'll stay with that west flow even on Thursday, some west winds and that will eventually shift to more of an easterly direction as we head into Friday, Saturday and Sunday. Uh, at least temporarily, we'll see that sea breeze develop in the late afternoon, but no, nothing like we've seen that steady west to southwest wind flow. Even Wednesday, a good chance for scattered showers and storms at any time during the day. Good chance for scattered storms on Wednesday. Now, temperatures are quite a contrast. 92 in Tallahassee, a little bit of rain and wind coming in off the Atlantic there. 84 in Jacksonville, a cooler 76 as some big storms have been moving through West Palm Beach, Fort Lauderdale and Miami. Right now it's 82 in Northport, 84 degrees in Mayaca City and 84 as well in Cortez and in Bradenton, 88 degrees in the Gulf water temperature. Now these temperatures will start to warm up a bit as we are seeing some sunshine now and it looks like that west wind, as I mentioned, will stay steady uh, through the overnight and tomorrow anywhere from 10 to 15 miles an hour which will keep that high surf up and that means rip current advisory remains with us through Tuesday. It may be able to expire on Wednesday. Now again, temperatures are a little bit cooler where it's rained. Currently it's 89 now, so it has bounced back up at the airport. We have some high clouds around and the winds are out of the northwest at 14 and the pressure at 29.83 inches. And the forecast, it looks like this as far as the uh, temperatures go, we'll see a forecast tomorrow right around 90 degrees for your high. We were at 92 today. 76 was the morning low, 101 set back in 1971, the record. And we did get some rain, nearly a third of an inch. And for the month now, we are above average about an inch and we're below average for a year about an inch. And as far as rainfall goes, we showed that already. Let's move on. Temperatures currently into the 70s and 80s over the Northeast, uh, 74 in Portland, 77 in Chicago, Indianapolis at 75 and 76 in Denver. So things have cooled off there a little bit. Southern Plains still hot though. 100 in Dallas, not the 107 they saw uh, last week, but uh, a little bit cooler as well in Atlanta now at 83 degrees. For boaters tomorrow, we'll still see some strong winds out of the southwest, especially in the afternoon, a moderate chop with a scattered storm here and there. The seven day forecast shapes up like this. 60% chance for redevelopment of storms late tonight and into the early morning hours and a 50% chance for a few coastal showers in the morning on Wednesday. 
Same goes true for Thursday, maybe just a little less chance, but still a few around in the morning. Inland storms in the afternoon and then late day storms come back into play Friday, Saturday and Sunday. High temperatures will be right around 90 degrees. Back to you. All right, Bob, thank you. Time now to check your first alert traffic for the drive home. US 41 is a bit backed up between Bee Ridge Road and Proctor Road in Sarasota. Traffic is slow moving in the southbound lanes right around the Bee Ridge and US 41 intersection. Adam? In consumer news, a London airport is using new scanners, which could one day lead to the removal of liquid restrictions, as well as keep passengers from having to remove items from their bags before passing through security. The CT scanners allow airport security staff to see a detailed three-dimensional X-ray image of objects inside people's luggage from every angle. The technology can also detect hidden explosives. It is being tested over the next six to 12 months and if successful, could be used at airports worldwide. A recall alert tonight. The maker of Ritz crackers is voluntarily recalling some of its products that contain a whey powder that was recalled due to potential salmonella. Those products include Ritz cracker sandwiches with cheddar or cream cheese and Ritz bits. They have expiration dates of January 14th to April 13th of 2019. The company says there have been no complaints of illnesses and the recall is being issued as a precaution. Well, one fast food restaurant is expanding its menu, but you will have to do the actual cooking. Today, Chick-fil-A announced it will become the first quick service restaurant to offer full meal kits. The Cook at Home program will provide fresh pre-measured ingredients to customers so they can make their own meals in about 30 minutes at home. There will be five meal options offered during the test run, including chicken parmesan, chicken enchiladas, Dijon chicken, pan, pan roasted chicken, and chicken flatbread. Are you seeing a pattern? Each option will serve two people for just under $16 and can be picked up at the front counter or at the, the drive through. $16, that's not, that's not bad for two people. Not bad at all for a meal. Well, entertainment news is coming up next. Stick around. Get more for your money at Sunset Subaru in Sarasota. Subaru vehicles hold their value better than any other brand for 2018, according to ALG. And Subaru is Kelly Blue Book's most trusted brand for four years running. The Subaru Outback is an IIHS top safety pick for 10 years running. Lease a new Subaru Outback today for just $2.49 a month. Or get 0% financing with zero down. Get more for your money. Go to Sunset Subaru in Sarasota. Every child follows a path in life. For many, that path will lead them to a door, a door that gives them a place to grow, to learn, to belong, a place to forge their future. Because while many doors open, these doors transform. They did for us. Support your local boys and girls clubs. Great futures start here. I think about my own family and I think about my own kids' dream and I see this kid's dream. There's something about dance that just is universal and just speaks to everybody. Every day some student makes a breakthrough, discovers something. Teaching is about giving. It's a different kind of giving. When I teach, I know it's a gift that I'm giving. Are you a soccer mom or dad? Regardless of their age or experience level, when your kids play soccer or any other sport, there's one person on the sideline who is key to help recognize and seek medical care for sports-related concussion. It's you. You need to know the signs and symptoms of concussion, and you need to act if you think your child has been injured. Remember, when in doubt, sit them out. To learn more, go to cbc.gov concussion. 1001, 1002, 1003, 1004. The thought of my sons growing up without me inspired me to quit smoking. I talked to my doctors, and then I threw away all my cigarettes, ashtrays, and lighters. I started exercising instead of smoking. Letting my friends online know I was quitting kept me on track. Staying away from alcohol when I was first quitting was key. I kept on trying, learned something each time. Do whatever it takes. No matter how many times it takes. We did it. You can, too. For free help, visit cdc.gov tips.
Every time you purchase a fishing license or register your boat, you're helping to preserve our nation's coastlines, lakes, rivers, and streams, protecting memories for generations to come. Learn how your participation in boating and fishing can help the environment at takemefishing.org slash conservation. Ryan Lochte posted a photo for the world to see and the U.S. Anti-Doping Agency noticed. It got him suspended again. The U.S. swimming star announced today that he has been suspended from competition for 14 months following a doping violation. Lochte, who moved back to Gainesville to train for the 2020 Olympics, says he and his wife took an intravenous infusion in May because their children were sick and they did not want to get sick also. Lochte posted about the infusion on Instagram, which led to USADA's investigation. Lochte's suspension would end in July of 2019. Michael Strahan and Sarah Haynes are getting their own hour on Good Morning America. The duo will co-host the third, the new third hour of the show entitled GMA Day. The announcement comes days after reports that Haynes would be leaving her post on The View to take over the newly added hour of the morning show. GMA Day premieres on Monday, September 10th at 1 o'clock p.m. on ABC. Warner Brothers used the 2018 San Diego Comic-Con event to give fans a preview of the next movie and the DC Extended Universe franchise. The first trailer for Aquaman's standalone flick features star Jason Momoa, along with looks at the undersea kingdom of Atlantis and his arch enemy, Black Manta. Aquaman swims onto movie screens December 21st. Comic-Con also featured the surprise announcement of a new season of Star Wars The Clone Wars. The animated series ran from 2008 to 2013. The 12-episode continuation will air on Disney's forthcoming streaming service, expected to launch next year. The Bachelorette Becca down to her final three men, which means it's time for fantasy suites. The final three men and their leading lady will travel to the jungle paradise of Chiang Mai, Thailand in tonight's episode. Tonight, tune in to The Bachelorette at 8 o'clock right here on ABC7 to see who makes it out of the fantasy suites and into the final two. Well, we got more news coming up. We'll be right back.